Let us prepare our hearts. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation shall be what shall seem your, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. 
You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in reading responsibly Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven and heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded and they were created, who made them stand fast forever and ever giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters, and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. Second reading is Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Let us stand for the gospel acclamation. to speak about the child to all who were looking 
for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. May your word be my word, and may the thoughts and meditation of our minds and hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Luke says, when the time came when talking about the purification of Mary, the circumcision and the naming of Jesus, and the presentation of Jesus. The word he used is when the time came, all of it part of the Jewish law. Luke wants us to know that Mary and Joseph faithfully followed the law of Moses. Leviticus chapter 12 begins, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the people of Israel saying, if a woman conceives and bears a male child, she will be ceremonially unclean seven days. On the eighth day, he will be circumcised. And it continues that the mother needs to wait another 26 days before being able to enter the temple in Jerusalem. Interestingly enough, Luke includes Joseph in that purification. He says when the time came for their purification. So Joseph is not left out. Joseph is a part of this holy family. He's part of what is purified and cleansed. It's not known why Luke uses that word there, that plural, but it's about the whole family being made right with God. Frederick Danker, who is a, a, one who has written Bible commentaries, said the meaning of those words, when the time came, literally means when the time was filled. When it was filled, and, and Paul in his letter to the believers in Galatia wrote, when the fullness of time had come, so he uses the word chronos, which is a timekeeping word, where we get our, our words chronograph, chronometer, keep, keeping and marking time. And yet it would seem that this, by, by the meaning of it being fulfilled, would be a kairos time, a time that was divine, divine time taking place, everything coming together at the right time for the right purpose. And so it was that that was what was happening at the temple. You had to be there. You had to be there to experience it. We had to be there because it's hard to imagine what it was like otherwise. You see, Simeon had been equipped for this day. Simeon didn't come into the temple not prepared. He came equipped for this day, able to see what was before him. Luke describes him as righteous, and devout, and he undoubtedly was in tune with God just by the way Luke writes about him, the Holy Spirit resting upon Simeon. Any restoration that needed to happen to him, any healing and, and being made complete had been done, and now he looked forward to the consolation, or rather the restoration of Israel. Simeon had been given the good news that he would not die before he saw the Lord's Messiah, someone that the Jewish people had been waiting for for centuries now after King David, waiting for one who would restore Israel, who would liberate. And it had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit, and he was guided by the Spirit to come to the temple at that Kairos time. We too can experience that kind of communion that kind of guidance of the Holy Spirit. It's not limited to someone like Simeon. It's a possibility for all of us. The kinds of prayer that we have explored the past four Wednesdays can help us to develop 
and to deepen that kind of relationship so that we're able to be in the right place at the right time to see what God seeks to make known. You see, because it, it's half, those Kairos moments are happening so frequently. And yet, if we're not in tune, they're going to pass us by. And if we can't get into that connection, we have to be there where someone like Simeon can direct our attention. Someone who can say, look, open your eyes to what's right in front of us, how God is at work bringing the kingdom of God ever nearer. I've said before that in my short stint of study with uh, a church in East Brooklyn, New York, that they began every gathering with, how have you seen God at work in your life? And it helped to train them to be able to see where God has been involved. Anna also was prepared for that time by the way she spent her time in worship and fasting and prayer. For Anna, it was almost like breathing. It was just a part of who she was, that, that intake of the breath, the spirit, the ruach of God, and breathing it out, breathing it in again, living in the house of God. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and, and to speak about the child to all who were looking for that redemption of Jerusalem. There are those today who ask, where is God? There are some who have stopped asking. And there are many who say, what is God doing? What, what has God done? Is God doing anything? And we need to be there, to be present, to be seeing and listening so we can hear and witness by the guidance of the Holy Spirit and or being present with those who are guided by the Spirit. And the result is joy and praise and wonder. A Jewish baby boy held by faithful parents can be seen to be the one God sends to change the world and who continues to change the world at a cost. Someone I don't know who has said Christmas is the beginning of the death of Christ. Animals are slaughtered to sacrifice. The infant son is temporarily saved from sacrifice. The mother's animal sacrifice signifies her postpartum cleansing. And the firstborn son's cash offering redeems him from death, although in this case it's a pair of two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Numbers chapter 18 verse 16 stipulates that instead of death, parents, the firstborn is to, to go to God, but the parents are to present a redemption price. So the infant Jesus is redeemed, and through him, through his death and resurrection, we are redeemed. What does that word redeemed mean? It's one of those that we use so much in church, but what does it really mean? I remember when I was a kid, you get a soda bottle, and it would say something like five cents if you returned it back to where you bought it. So you paid a deposit on it and you returned it. Or you could forego that and throw it in the garbage. But it said it's, it's about those times where bottles and cans are returned to be redeemed. And that we value, we receive value for something that we thought was worthless. That empty bottle only seemed worthless. And merely looking at it with our limited vision, we may have trouble seeing that it, that we, that everyone, that every life is not worthless, but priceless. Being redeemed through Jesus' death and resurrection, we die and rise with him in the waters of baptism. We are called to be a part of a kingdom that means there is going to be a falling and rising of many, a sign that will be opposed. And Martin Luther put it this way, let this world's tyrant rage in battle will engage. His might is doomed to fail. God's judgment must prevail. And so we pray, like Simeon, like Anna. We wait, we respond, we stay, we go, 
we open our hearts, minds, ears, and lips so that we can see, hear, and tell that there is good news of great joy for all people. And to that, may all God's people say, Amen. Michelle, 
Luke, Sarah, Brenda and Michael, Cindy, Sherry, Susan, Steve, Alyssa, Jennifer, Laura, Nick, Debbie, Eileen, Rosie, Larry, Pete, Carol, Billy, Maggie, Pastor Fred, Pat, Ted, David, Candace and family, Katie, Colton, all members of our community of faith, especially those who live alone and may not always be connected to us virtually while still connected with us in your spirit. All those suffering and recovering from COVID-19, those who are homeless, including those who will receive the food and clothing gathered in the reverse advent calendar, and those we name now silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, God of vision, we pray for open minds, hearts, and spirits of the members gathered here in person and virtually. Grant that we may have a clear sense of your mission and your plan for each of us, as well as for Zion, your mission and plan for our neighborhood, for our community and beyond. Let us know you hear our prayers and see our need. This day we lift up Irene Zakowski and those whose lives she touches. Guide her and all of us in proclaiming the good news lifted up this day, inviting, equipping, and serving in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Connecting God, we pray that you would reveal what can be done for, with, and by the congregations of the Region 9 Synods of the Southeastern Synod and Caribbean Synod. Thank you for their partnership with us. Bless them as they gather and are sent to proclaim Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work at older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across nations. Lord, in your mercy. Let us depart in peace, O God, according to your word. For John, apostle and evangelist, and all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us those who trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace by a sign to one another. And let us take opportunity to also contact others in our circle that need to hear a word of peace. Maybe seated this time. During this time of offering, I invite you to consider the gift that God has given us and the ways that we can share that gift with others. As you, those of you who are here present, as you leave today, there are offering plates. Uh, you can also contribute through our web page on, on the Giving Online button. Now let's stand for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and mysterious God, in the beginning the darkness waited and you created light. Sarah and Abraham waited for a future, and you sent descendants greater than the stars. The Hebrew slaves waited for rescue, and you sent Miriam and Moses to enact your liberation. Israel waited in exile for renewal, and you empowered prophets and poets with your life-giving speech. 
As the whole world groaned in waiting for release and rebirth, you sent Jesus, born of strong Mary, fathered by humble Joseph, incarnate in our humility in solidarity with the suffering and the poor, full of wisdom and grace for all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, we pray that you be with us as we receive this holy meal. You may be seated, wait for instruction for coming forward. <laughs>
Glad to have you with us. Thank you so much for that. Uh, all right, we still are receiving donations for our reverse advent calendar. There, you'll find a hand up on that. Uh, there are items of food and clothing that are going to the homeless. They will be going through Hope South Florida. So if you would like to make a donation, either of food item, the actual items, or if you'd like to make a contribution, we can go shopping for you. But that collection continues through the end of this year. Also, you'll find a remarkable handout on some stories of this past year of faith in action, how, how your contributions, your gifts are making a difference in people's lives. And it's really a wonderful thing to be aware of. Uh, also, more about who we are, inviting, equipping, and serving. And uh, tradition in a lot of Christian churches is a blessing of homes in January. So you will find an epiphany blessing for homes in the handouts as well. It's good to be back worshiping in the sanctuary uh, due to Tropical Storm Ada. We do have a roof to repair and other, other uh, repairs to be done here and in Katie Luther Chapel. And, uh, and so those will be progressing, but we thank everybody that has uh, been a part of supporting that. And thank you for the capital improvement offerings that have been, been given in that regards also. Uh, this, this week and next week, we will not be having 959 or Wednesday evening prayer at the end of the day or the Youth Empowerment Project just to, just to give your leaders a little bit of a break. But uh, the second week of January, we'll be back up and running and doing those things. Uh, continue to be postings on our Facebook page as well as our web page. And so please check into those. And with that, I invite you to stand as we receive our Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Praise be to God.